bone to bone to bone to bone to bone to bone to bone hey to bone 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 hey yeah that's right this week we have tony gordon my best mate my partner in crime my hetero life mate um he joins me on the jd show and it's real nice because we obviously i don't need to find out information about him and you guys can contact him direct if you want to uh, so we got into just like some of the challenges we've had over the last year two years of uh, lockdown um really interesting things just about how you know he and i have a very focused and 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 in line message that we're going for however we come at it in very different ways i like to be around people and have that noise and banter in the office whereas tony likes to have the world shut out so he can put his head down and deliver a ridiculously amount a massive amount of content um real interesting show it's great to talk to someone who does all of the work as opposed to just listening to someone talk about how it could be done all the time and also Tony's one of the smartest people you ever going to meet. So enjoy this show. It has the wonderful T-Bone Malone, the fantastic Mr. Tony Gordon. Enjoy. And we are live. Welcome back to another episode of The Jaily Show. This week we have your friend, my best friend, the most technical guy I know, the awesome, the wonderful Mr. Tony Gordon. Ahoy there. I jumped in quick. I didn't do much of an intro for you. I just dropped you in hot. We just got to presume everyone knows who I am, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, for those uh, for the, where the presumption is completely wrong, um, tell people out there about, about your good self, Danny. Yeah. Hi, I'm Tony Gordon. I am the co-founder and creative director of GeoPro UK. Uh, me and Jay started this shindig about seven years ago. And here we are, a year into COVID and still kicking ass. Still kicking ass and taking names. Um, hell yeah. Now, it, as Tony said that we've been, uh, yeah, I mean, we've been working together, uh, you know, we've been running this business for like six, seven years now, and we've been friends for 20, is it? 20 plus? Mm, 60, yeah, I was 16 and I'm now 36. So yeah. <laughs> all righty. <laughs> Rock and roll. <laughs> so we, we've done a whole bunch of stuff all over, um, over the world kind of together um, from being in bands, Tony started a whole bunch of businesses, um, whole, whole stuff. But listen, the way these shows are always running at the moment, Tony, like last year has been unprecedented no matter what happened in the past. Um, how was last year for you? Oh, it, it was, I think, like most people, a fairly long one, I guess, unless you've been at home furloughed this whole time, in which case, you, yeah, lucky, I'd say, you still know, long though, right? Still I mean, long in one way or another for everybody, right? Like the, there's mm. no, no one's had it easy. Um, but, you know, some of uh, some have had to put their heads down and, and smash and some have, have, have had to like sit at home and worry. Uh, I think either <laughs> way, our anxiety levels are all higher than they were last year for one reason or another, right? Um, <laughs> But and you, and you and you very much have had a huge amount to deliver. Like you've been head down, easy. Like we, we were pretty much at the anniversary the last few days, and mm. also your birthday. Happy birthday, Mr. Tony! Hey, two um, <laughs> hey second birthday lockdown. Um, Technically, actually, the first one wasn't in lockdown. I I was self isolating prior okay. to the lockdown, which was the day after my birthday. So I got was it? <laughs> Technically, <laughs> yeah. this is your first book to, birthday lockdown. How was it? Oh, it was it was it was great. I mean, uh, there were other people around this time, whereas last time I was isolating completely by myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so bar as you've been head down, right? I've seen it. You've you've it, there's been so much to deliver over a short period of time. Like you say, a lot of people have been out of work. We've had like the other end of that problem, very good problem to have, where there's been too much to deliver. And I think a lot of businesses have been in that same sort of space because. Um, you know, where they've had to furlough staff or, you know, reduce staff, et cetera, um, but still kind of deliver the same amount of work. What what have you learned? Like, you know, what, what has this taught you? It's, it's it's definitely something I've never been through before. Like, <laughs> Yeah, right. And many things. And I think I guess it's actually accentuated things that we've sort of have, have highlighted or, or learned in the past. But then uh, some of those things you can sort of just push through and never address because <laughs> normal times I mean, you, I, I don't know. Whereas I would say in like this particular case, like just working, uh, like uh, my, a lot of the time, my solution is okay. Here's the next calendar month. I can actually fit 16 hours a day in for X amount of time before I collapse, and it'll be fine. Now it turns out if you just sit home all the time and you just keep doing that, you sort of forget. It, it's much. I guess this environment is much easier to forget that you're just mm. uh, battering. But, you know, rather than planning. And, I think and what do you mean? Do you mean, 
and do you mean as a business owner who's having to do like the doing while 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 staff is short and work gets high you're having to jump on board a little bit um, yeah like, I think yeah i think that's those... probably, yeah like that's probably what i mean and i'm probably uh presuming yeah exactly there's a i think it's a bit of it a bit of that it's a bit of that it's a bit of there when we when you get put in a situation like this where you know you might lose some stuff or you might get loads more work but not necessarily not have the confidence to be like we need to aggressively expand the team to take this work or genuinely not have the time to do that expansion which is actually hmm. probably more where we've lay we have so much work to do we haven't necessarily put the time aside to bring in the new people to do that work luckily fixing that one now um <laughs> but in that mean in that time in between i think in the office Mm. we would have noticed earlier um uh, an address whereas i think when we're all sort of cubbed away at home it it can become it's, a bit it's harder to notice things as early right because everyone's so siloed everyone's doing the thing you see people in a meeting and you know i love the fact that meetings are so condensed but also like all i do is meetings now yeah. but like you get to turn on for a meeting and be like hi how you doing no 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 you can still you don't i guess you know you don't know if your whole team are turning off the or if you are, like, you know, if you're turning off that meeting and be like, okay, great, see you later, Zoom way, bye. Oh, God, you know. Whereas at least you'd be able to see that in the office and see that, hang on, it's like, is everyone struggling? Is everyone not? Um, yeah, and are they putting on a brave face for meetings, like you say? And then, and then, like, if, when you're actually with people all day, every day, you get a bit more just eight, eight hours of, of uh, subtle subconscious feedback from them just in that interaction level, right? Yeah. So I think without that, you have to sort of, you have to address that that's missing. In your mm. own mind and try and come up with a new way to deal with it make sure that you know realize that not everyone's going to be on the same page because yeah. they're not always in those conversations in the same way they might be when they're just sitting around <laughs> like that's the, the thing room. i found that's the thing i found massively mm. is, is so many times i've been sure that we've all had this conversation because i've yeah. had this conversation kind of separately with people but but I, yeah exactly like you know on a zoom call here and a zoom call there when i'm talking to that person i'm talking to this person but then it comes to like, how comes everyone doesn't know this? Like, you know, where, where has this fallen down? I'm sure I've said this and I'm blue in the face. And actually, I've just said it to a number of different people within the team, but never as a team. Whereas in the mm. office and in, the, in that sort of environment, you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't be going, hey, Tony, come behind closed doors and we're going to have this yeah. conversation, which no one else can hear. Like, you know, we oh, wouldn't we're do having that. a chat over here and you suddenly realize, oh, this is useful to everybody. Hey, everyone, stop me doing, just yeah. come over whoa, 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 whoa. It only takes two minutes. Mm. It's tougher to do in this Zoom environment, isn't it? You, and you can still do it. You can just interject in people's days, but it's it's not the same thing. It doesn't, it's not as simple, right? It feels more <laughs> like it's breaking momentum or something. And also because we're also maxed on Zoom calls with clients, et cetera, speaking to people, there's, you know, there's, there's a lot of back and forth. If we speak to a supplier, if we speak to each other, if we speak to a client, if we speak to anyone, we're on a call like our calendars are now like dun, 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 blocked out so it, whereas when you're seeing someone working on something you're like hey have you got a call yeah in 10 minutes cool this will only take two come over yeah. here and you can have the chat um and it's that workload isn't it it's just it's it's the planning i think which is with a year like 2020 such uncertainty you know we're 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 always pretty honest about what happened we lost mm. what, 60 grand 50 60 grand of business in march over the space oh, of two yeah, weeks yeah 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 which sucked um oh good the anniversary of that's coming up yay <laughs> um and that was you know but that was a really dark time and that that that, that looked like it was going to be you know horrendous and we managed to turn it around found other avenues and and and, and salvage and sort of thrive but <laughs> when it was so uncertain after losing that we spent the rest of the year on the edge of our seats even when it was a good month happening we were like cool but chances are you know february is a good month in 2020 and then everything yeah. went so bad uh, <laughs> so we couldn't necessarily do that growth you're talking about you can't know our plan, plan right mm. yeah the plan growth we had for this time last year is probably happening now right in reality but probably even in covid we should have and could have done that in, like late last year mm. but it was so hard to know at that point in time whether that was a good thing to do right like we yeah. like it's so hard um i think everyone's probably experiencing that to some degree or bit like business owners and managers everywhere but it's um mm. I, I wonder <laughs> yeah i wonder how many people are just head down you know trying <laughs> to just get it done one way or the other um cuz yeah well, well, and great. also it's a thing isn't it is is that we all um 
everyone's had to pick, but wear so many hats, especially in small businesses, right? Mm -hmm. Small, medium-sized businesses, people wear a lot of hats. Uh, and when in a time when all of a sudden you have too much work on or not enough resources, depending on you know which way it's gone, you have to like put on a different hat. There it is. And say like, this right now I'm going to go and, you know, we have all this delivery to do. I can help do that delivery. So I'm not going to manage the team. I'm going to jump in and muck in as well. Um, it's been hard for me because I've, I've kind of watched the whole time and been like, cool, I can't help. <laughs> How is it, guys? You look pretty stressed. <laughs> Bad yeah, news, I've sold something. Real sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, that's that's the that, that's the point. You can't have everybody in that. That, that you need people on it, it involved, but not involved, right? To a degree, mm. to just to keep everybody in check, which is a large, yeah. what, like a large part of what you do with the team is uh, both like is is a uh, like morale. You're like the morale officer. <laughs> no one would have said that a few years ago. No chance. So, so what do you what what, do you, what else have you learned? I like I've I've. I, it's one of those years, you know, how every year we expect not you know your birthday or whatever, but you look back and you're like, cool, wow, I was a real kid back then. I thought like this, like I think there's ten years worth of experience happened in the last last twelve months. Yeah. What, what else have you learned? Like, what were the good things? What 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 stuff did we have to implement that's been really good and we're going to carry on? Hmm, that's a good point. I mean, we have a lot more regulated meetings now um, where we probably didn't before because there were, we had a I've always been of the impression that daily meetings for the sake of them are a waste of time. Mm. And that is from my experience of years of working <laughs> in departments where they were. Right. <laughs> Not necessarily because the principle of the idea was wrong. If that makes sense. Now, I think. And, and maybe is that a throwback? Because you and I both obviously worked in significantly bigger companies than we run now. You worked at Microsoft. Mm. Um, so is it a case of like, you know, those regulated meetings within departments? If it's, you know, a blanket rule for everyone, and then it's sitting in the wrong departments, doesn't necessarily make sense. But the, the concept itself is kind of, well, yeah. It, yeah, it seems to be working, right? And it was also yeah. a, 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 to a degree that we would, be having those conversations loudly in the office it was kind of a meeting but we didn't necessarily say let's sit down and and have the discussion what so what, what's the benefits of having those meetings well like you say it's probably the same as having that coffee in the morning before while you're booting up your computer or whatever right but it is it is the the replacement for that as well right oh i was doing this thing at the end of the day yesterday could you quickly jump on that before we get started mm. this morning because it just said or what or even more casual Things, just just having a touch base so that you know, yeah. everyone's on board everyone's in a good place and you know everyone it, those that's why like, that's what i absolutely loved about it mm. during especially during like the height of lockdown when just hadn't seen anyone it was all a little bit like much knowing yeah. that i got like some time half hour to speak to four five six people uh depending on who's who's on the call on the day and be able to have the conversation and be mm -hmm. like cool you know hey what did you watch last night oh the crown cool yeah i just started watching that thanks to andy barden um and, and whatever but just you know have the communication when it was just uh me and my wife or you know you and and your, your housemate or like you know wh whoever you're speaking to i find it really nice to have that but what's bore out of it is this really nice communication where everyone knows what everyone's doing and mm. i didn't really realize that maybe they didn't before yeah it closes a disconnect that you can have and I think you're right, though, as long as the team isn't, as long as you're not doing it for the sake of it in a yeah. huge team, when you get to a huge team, then it's very difficult for 75 people to all tap into what everyone else is doing and for that to actually be useful. <laughs> but when you've got five to 10 people, it's very, you know, no, there's no reason why not at all. It, um, yeah. And when you get, and when you get 10 to 20, 20 to 50, then yeah. you're, then it's, then it's broken out into, you know, the, the departments and the sections are having it. But then I agree with you. It's, it's, I think too often, especially maybe it was and things are changing, but there was too many like blanket rules. The company does this where realistically it should be the department. Why on earth would mm -hmm. a technical person like yourself or a creative person like yourself, why would your department work on the same metrics of my department in sales? That's yeah. like two different completely things. You know, maybe for you guys, it works out to have one solid meeting once a week. Great. That's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. Cool. See you in hell. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Whereas with salespeople, you need to give them the, the gummy berry juice in the morning and get them all pumped up and get, make sure they're doing the right thing. That's true. That makes sense. But why, why do those blanket rules? And hopefully we're seeing more and more, especially with now all these businesses moving into like working from home and kind of hybrid roles, maybe more and more, it'll get less, less like stringent and yeah. stuck in its yeah, ways. Yeah.
I think it's classic. It's classic corporate, isn't it? When you get to that size, you have to implement some standard, some sort of <laughs> standardized rules. And at some point they expand or they contract, <laughs> but at one point or another, they don't make sense because you can yeah. try and things out. Right. <laughs> it's, 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 you know. And I think that's something I've learned during 2020 is like a rule is no longer a rule if no one's adhering to it. Like yeah. there is no point banging that drum at some point. And obviously in a big company, big corporate, you know, 100,000 people, whatever, that's very, a, that's a very difficult thing to change. But when you're agile and when you're smaller, you can say, cool, we made that rule for a good reason, but like none of us are sticking to it, whatever that is. File hmm. structure, what name, reason? calendars, oh, whatever the sense? thing is. Yeah. Was that yeah, a terrible that idea? Reason? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone even remember? <laughs> yeah. Oh no. no you know, it's a great idea, and we all forgot. Okay, cool. We, you know, at least yeah. we addressed it. Or no, it was really difficult for us all to do. So great. In that case, it wasn't. You know, is it as important as it being difficult? No. Great. And we can get rid of it. Um, well, I don't it know. Was whether... relevant, or it was relevant when we were in the office, but now we're all at home. It's completely irrelevant. So why are we still doing it? Oh, we're not. Yeah. That's why we're not. Right. It's, it's, it's <laughs> sort of things, right. We don't. We no longer need to book a meeting room. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, and I think that's that's been a real teacher for me over the last year. Especially, you know, we've had to all businesses have had to stay like agile, just super agile. Don't like to throw pivot out there, but we've been bobbing and weaving left, right, and center. With okay, this didn't used to be one of our core services, and now everybody wants it, and no one loves the thing they wanted beforehand. So let's move. And I think everyone's been playing that game of kind of like fitting the jigsaw puzzle together mm -hmm. so what about the good stuff <clears throat> that was the good stuff what's the real negative stuff what you know what, what, what sucked don't know that it's either positive or negative but i think it's uh it's been an interesting time to it, it's accentuated it's accentuated the idea that the idea and tr remembering that everybody reacts differently in different scenarios so mm -hmm. Personally, I'm far more effective sitting here at home, yeah. not having Savage. my commute, not having, not being interrupted, not having essentially a day that's scheduled into eight hours when I'm like, I want to work more than that. You know? <laughs> but, you know, but aside, but aside from that, it's... Um, it, no, but that's very, that, very true. Like, you, you work so well from home. Like you work so well with, with this setup. I and mean, it's something that we've done in the past when you're like, right, look, I'm going to go and deliver this project like, yeah i got uh, i got this yeah, week to yeah, do yeah. so I'm, i'll see you guys in a week and you've gone and put yeah. your head down but over the last year the work has increased exponentially and you've delivered it all and i think a lot of that is the fact that you well a you're happy to work 10 plus hours mm -hmm. uh, 12 plus 14 plus um and you can like you, you've got the yeah. ability to be kind of you know but deliver what, quality over that time what i think it's shown though is that you mm. need to rem it, it's accentuated the fact that you need to remember everyone's different and that, that's still the case in the office everyone is different and much as you try to treat everybody with the same exact set of <laughs> standards and rules people aren't all the same so you sort of have to treat them a little differently and just in terms of getting the best out of them i think that at home it became very clear to me very quickly like it's almost like a phase cycle phase thing where every three months or so that we're in lockdown everyone just loses it eventually <laughs> like for a, for a week where they're just not and not loses it just grumpy and it but yeah. it seems societally to happen at the same time i don't know whether that's because it's like the big news is we've just been locked down for another month and therefore everyone's oh, reacting to that or whatever oh, that yes. might be yeah. but uh and then you know back to it, like back to getting back into the office that this but like that sort of the, even the concept of it coming disperses mm. it almost immediately um and i think we've just it's helped it's le i've learned a lot about people mm. and how to not how to get the best out of them but just how to read them how to know when something's coming earlier and i think you know? and i think you know to, to use you an example uh before before 2020 you were like i work great from home and hadn't really thought uh, not, not really thought but not really seen the fact that the rest of us probably aren't working as well. You're, mm. you know, you're, you're picking up an extra bit of slack, maybe. <laughs> I mm. don't know, right? Um, but while you're you're great at it, like I, I I need a commute, for instance, as much as yeah. the commute eats into my day, and I'm now doing longer days and stuff. But like a commute really gets me in a good place to break it up, right? Like, yeah. like yeah, and and be really efficient at mm. work, no matter how early I'm getting in, and still be able to do those hours, but having a dance and a sing on the way to work. Um, I drive, I don't dance too much, but you know, chair dancing. A little bit um, of road rage clears, clears the old ducks out. Well, <laughs> how dare you? How dare you? I don't know what you mean. Um, no, no, no. I mean, <laughs> oh, no, that's not you. That's someone else. Sorry, yeah. That's the other guy. That's the other guy. So, so what's next, right? We've, 
we've we we did it. We survived it. We made it through. Uh, what's on the cards? Well, I'd say if I go back to this time last year, yeah, I was on my own in, a, in my apartment in my flat, mm. and therefore I was like, cool. I'll release a new video every day, pers- <laughs> like a personal video. And I did it for six days before I was like, I am completely out of energy and ideas <laughs> to continue doing this. Uh, but since then, the time to build, to do like the time to do our own shows, like stuff that we want to do has sort of diminished, I think, over the last year. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. For me personally, it's, it's just get a few fun tasks back on. Like, mm. um, and we've been talking about the last few days. We've got, uh, we, we did the music show. We've done the we work did. thing. So it's movie show time. It's time Ooh. for, we're going to do a show called Director's Cuts. <sighs> And I think with the Schneider with the Schneider cut just coming out, it's a sort of on the on the mind at the moment, the whole thing. But there's a million director's cut stories, not just the movie, not just the difference between the two movies, but mm. the story as to why that movie exists and why there are those different versions. Yeah. We we could talk about that forever. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. And uh, I really like the idea of like we've always we've always created content. We've always been doing something kind of like fun for us as well as because it's what we do mm-hmm. as a business and it's it's a good thing to eat our own dog food and it keeps us creative. Like being able to do something which isn't, um, not like I don't enjoy doing the Jaylee show, don't enjoy business shows, but, but also I shouldn't necessarily host a show on my own talking to movie directors because I'm not the person. But you and I talking mm-hmm. about that, that sounds like a real fun thing to do. And the fact that we have the facilities to make that YouTube show, a podcast and the thing and the what's it and stuff and the stuff and the stuff is even more fun. And, you know, means we can get a little bit of a uh, momentum behind it. But it's true. Like we, this is the kind of the trifecta of stuff we like. We've done music. Yeah. We've done the business. And we've never, do, we've never done anything on a movie show. No, no, no. We we thought about it. We did that one show with Greg where we we all we did a podcast where we all watched the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie and tried to record a podcast while it was playing. Yeah. Before realizing that that was a terrible way of doing that. <laughs> it was only a terrible way to do it because we none of us had watched the movie in like five or ten years. So we were and, it was, yeah. and we were just so absorbed in nostalgia. <laughs> we spent the whole th- the podcast was us being like, "Wow, they they look." Really oh cool. yeah, I remember that. Oh my god, April! <laughs> Top show. I really like it. There's, there's. Um, I think last year talking about what we want to do as as well. We we've always had the problem. We've been because we can spin shows out. We've done a ton of podcasts. We were saying before this show, we've done a ton of podcasts where we talk about the new show that the new show have never happened. It happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're like excellent episodes of podcasts where we just come up with the idea. It's but the we've... greatest show you've ever heard. <laughs> what, what? Oh, yeah, you know, that came out in Singapore. You missed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's only the export. Um, <laughs> but over the last year, we've managed to kick so many ideas around while definitely not having the space time or ability to to like focus on our own show totally. our own thing yeah um so like some of these ideas that we've been kicking around have been like oh that is a really good idea no no let's do mm. that i really want to do that as opposed to this one and this one and this one and this one and and we're just talking about it so i'm looking forward to the same thing especially it gets a little sunnier loads of little bits of stuff that we can kind of put together i want to start a cooking show Bang into yeah. barbecue. I've always been bang into barbecue, and there is and, and uh, all the research I do. There's never any English guy who knows anything. That's that's that that's a better name than branded. What, what the English guy? Barbecue. Bang into barbecue. <laughs> oh, copyright, <laughs> James Honey. This is pretty good. <laughs> bang into barbecue. Oh. It does restrict it to just outside on the barbecue, though. We can't come back inside in the winter. But nah, you know, I'm banging, nah, I'm bang into barbecue all year long. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to that. And it's nice to like um, also keep the creative juices. That's why I like, mm-hmm. you know, when it comes back to why we're doing this as a business as well, like I want to create content. I like it. It's fun. I like working with, you know, the driest business out there and being like, hey, you know, these bits are really fun that you do. What are you You're passionate good. about? Yeah. It was what we would say to a client. And that's very much what we need to do with what is what we haven't had the time to do is make that mm. content that is the, the content we're passionate about because it's just more interesting right and and that that's pro- interesting content is promotional content whether it's on topic or not mm. Mm. and for me and, and for me like it means that we're you know making sure we again just back to that eat your own dog food we tell people mm. all the time that like a really the way of getting content marketing up to scratch is like having something long form having a good idea that you can talk about and then making loads of little bits off of it we can do that we have the facility to do it it seems weird to 
you know, it's, it, it seems weird to be like, I don't like that. You know, where, where do you, get, where does the barber get his haircut? Oh, I get my cut, haircut over there. Like, I don't, <laughs> you don't do, yours? <laughs> I don't know, right? Um, so new shows like it. And what about the business? What else, what, what, what else is, are you just going to keep your head down and working, working on your own forever? Yeah, that's, 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 that's no, uh, we have, yeah, we are expanding the team. We finally got around to actually, I mean, thanks to thanks to your help and the CXO's help, we've actually like started the recruitment process. And mm. look, we have uh, someone new joining. We have looking for, we're looking for a video editor. Anyone Ooh. out there have the prerequisite skills? Tell me, Tony, what are those prerequisite skills? Ooh, they would be like, you know, editing videos. Dun, what kind dun, of dun. videos, Tony? Well, all kinds, but mostly social videos. So, you know, if, uh, let's do a little pitch. If you are a video editor with experience in, you know, Premiere and After Effects, but also love a little bit of subtitling and maybe a little bit of design here and there, and, you know, wetting your beak across the business, maybe there's a role for you at GL Pro UK. Eyebrows. Solid podcast uh, content there, but we know we will definitely use that as a cut later. Um, <laughs> oh, maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, for those, sorry for those listening live. I was, uh... <laughs> but no, yeah, no, absolutely right. And that has been an amazing thing as well. Like the the amount of applications we had, like over mm. a 12, 14 day period, we had somewhere in the region of two hundred and forty applications for one role. And I guess we knew that would be the case in the mark with the with the world how it is, right? I but it might be. You didn't know, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, obviously, it's been a real hard year, year, year for our industry, and we're incredible, like you know, incredibly mm. lucky to be in a position where you know we're in a situation where we were growing. But there's so many good people out there, and it was so tough. Like I wanted yeah. to go through every CV. There were a bunch of people um, outside of the area we're looking for, outside of location, who get in touch. I still want to look at the CVs because if you're great and you want to come work for us, like we aren't, we all do live remote. And that really blew things out of the water because, you know, at least usually if you get 240 applications and some are based in Scotland and some are based in America and um, probably in 2020. Write them off at least, right? Yeah. But but yeah, like the world's opened up, right? It's, it's a bit After different After a year now. of working like this, I didn't think it, but it was going through it and trying to find it. Now, ultimately, we, you know, we do want people to join the office so we can get back to what we're saying and have that creative buzz within where we're going and everyone can work together. Oh, unified. Oh, oh, as a team. Um, but the good news is, although we found one Huckleberry, I think we're going to go for another. I think it's yeah. too many. Good, I think it's too many good people out of the tone. Like we had so many, like it was so hard to get down to sort of t 10, 15 people who were interviewed. It's, mm. it's, we, I don't think we can and, walk away with one. And there's some interesting uh, like points that I've like gleaned from that that I didn't. Mm. That were maybe they, they were not necessarily different from because of COVID, but especially in these sort of creative roles where it, there's a lot these days, like it's not like an old uh, the old days where you go into a studio, into a, you know, a film studio or something, and you, it is like that in film studios where you have one person doing their role. I'm the, I'm the director of photography. I deal with I'm the DIT. I'm this that and that, and I have my very defined role. I have a team mm -hmm. under me. In the social world, it's much more this is your client and they have these things mm. do you, and you build all of those things. Mm. And, and so many people these days have all of those prerequisite skills because you need to, if you're, when you're entering the industry in 2021 or even 10 years ago, like it's much more the thing to have a, a why, even if you don't do them all to a professional level, but to yeah. have at least touch, touched on each of those things. Now that's a very hard thing to then look at a CV and gleam like where's the line between things I have experience in and things I'm good in. Cause I wouldn't expect anyone to have actually worked for a long time in every single one of those things that I might want them to do. What in <laughs> every one of the departments around film, for instance. No, no sure. way. I mean, not unless they're, they, you know, got 25 years experience, five years in each department, but you know what mm. I mean? That would be, that wouldn't be reasonable. So it is uh, you've got to sort of um, almost make assumptions based on what you see and how you, uh, and, and where they've been touching, like what, what the work they've been doing, what, what their work they've been doing is in terms yeah. of where it's been touching different places. And let's see this. You look at a TV and it looks great because they're a great creative. But what does that mean? <laughs> uh, like they have a good eye uh, for, for something that looks nice. What does that mean? You know, it's just, oh, it blows my mind. <laughs> so, so let's go through this then. We went through all those yeah. CVs, right? Mm -hmm. What we ended up with winners, maybe's nah. And then you had Tony's picks, right? What mm -hmm. made the winners? 
right? We're to- think if there's a, we, there's a ton of people out there, we might go for another round of this. But there's a ton of people looking for work across the board, right? You yeah. specifically recruit for this. What 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 was similar about all those people who stood out? I think the first thing is really that they had l- looked at the role. I know mean, that sounds silly, but uh, as in had actually looked at the role, picked out the things that were maybe not the standard thing that a video editor would do, but were called out as something I'd want in the role and at least addressed it, whether that was a little line somewhere or a little or in the cover letter. Um, and secondarily to that, like contextual things that I know I would write on my CV, having done those jobs that you would. So you could write for instance, here's an example. You could write, yeah. I'm great with audio plugins. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Or you could list the actual audio plugins, at least in a sort of grouped way that you're familiar with. And by looking at that, I'm like, well, I know that at least you know what those are. Sure. <laughs> Even if you haven't used them, you've at least done the re- And that's that. It's a little thing totally. like that. So no, I totally agree. To and, and, and so often I found myself, we had all these, we had hundreds of CVs to go through. Mm-hmm. You get to a point where no matter how much I want to go through every single one and give someone a chance, like I'm having to skim some stuff. I can't work it all out myself. I can't dig into everyone's experience. So when someone did put technical information, like I have experience in this. So for in in this instance, we're looking for a video editor and that was um, like plugins or, or, you know, audio was plugins. Yeah. But if if it's a technical thing, right, for whatever job it is and you say, I can do this, like list it out, break it out, make, what Mm -hmm. if the fifth thing on that list, the fifth plugin, the fifth technical bit, the fifth whatever is the one which me as an employer goes like, that's what we use you get moved to the, the top of the point. So I think you're right. I think there's a, a big disconnect on how much information people are almost willing to share on their CVs. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it might be that they, yeah, that they think that they're not, some people just send their CV, right? Uh, they don't like, I would never just send my CV. I reappropriate my CV for the role I'm applying for. You know, however much that is, whatever that is, it's whether it's just the cover letter, what, whether because you, your experience is perfect, you always want to be like thinking about the role when you're right. Uh, not everyone does that, and I, under, I fully understand that if you're just sitting there replying all day. But, but all of the winners did pro- across the board sent a cover letter to us. Yeah. And the only reason that's important is because you know that you then you know that they've actually read the job because they mentioned it in the cover letter. Yeah. <laughs> the because, thing. And, uh, and that's the thing is the cut. I, th- I think one of the things that I've taken away from all of all of the, the many, many applications we got is too many people are just clicking apply, 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 mm-hmm. apply, apply to job after job after job. And it becomes a real repetitive kind of uh, action for them. This is a decision for your, you know, it's your job. It's your career. You're going to move and do this for a year, two, three, five, ten, whatever. Like, get it right. Contact the company mm-hmm. businesses that you want to go and work for. And cut that number down. Don't just scattergun approach like everyone I could work for in in Surrey. Go and the businesses within your area that you're going to work for or whatever. But then send mm. a cover letter to them. Send a letter being like, hey, I saw GL Pro UK make video. Interestingly, yeah. I love video too. Here's why I think I'd be great for the role. If you don't have any experience, that's when you can also say, I've always loved video. I've always loved film. I've, I've never worked in it, but I would love to. And you can actually, you can pitch your like your emotional pitch almost. You're like, like address it, problems, address problems. Yeah, address and let's problems. look at. I, like, I understand yeah. my CV is lacking in all of this experience. However, like, <laughs> check out this reel that I made myself. Check out this information I have, or whatever. And and genuinely, if we go right down to someone who has been employed by us recently. That was the case. We discounted them because of location. We had a lot of people saying, happy to relocate, that when actually we spoke to them a little bit and they were like, yeah, but I can do it remotely, right? And we're like, mm, yes, the job's going to start remotely as it all, you know, we really sort of built it You need it to out. be able to commute to the office. Yes, it's specifically for this role. <laughs> this, we want someone in the office and that is the thing. And we had an awful lot of people being like, well, no, okay, you're not willing to relocate. Oh, so, if you need me to, if I have to. Yeah, if you need me to, or you know, if it gets to the point where we, you know, and I'm like, no, 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 this is a job in in this location. It's going to start remotely. So, because of that, ultimately the person who got employed is going to relocate. <laughs> but in their cover letter, they were like, "Here's why: used to live down here, right. family down here, went to university here, did the thing there. Now I'm coming back, looking for the right." As as opposed to someone being like, "Yeah, if I get a job, I'll move to London. Sure." I'm like, cool. We're not we're not quite in London. Uh, <laughs> the other thing that got me? Yeah. And this is much more gimmicky, is people who put pictures 
of the things they know how to do. And that sounds really silly, but there's quite a few, and I've never seen this before in CVs necessarily in the past, but like, it's yeah. essentially like software, like a, a little scale where you're like, I'm good, this good with this software. I'm, I'm, I'm this good with this software. And I'm this good. like, yeah, it gives a visual representation of the candidates belief in their own thing in those things. And even as simple as it is to do, I look mm. at it immediately and I'm like, cool. No, at least what well, I, I know at least this base stuff and I don't have to do. And do you know what, when, cool we, when, when we're looking for a creative role, when we're looking for a creative mm. role specifically, right? How many CVs did we go through that were just word docs? Yeah. Right. In, you know. Creative role. Part of your job is to take information and make it more catchy, eye catching to people that are yeah. going to see it. Well, your CV is the first step in that direction. Literally, right? I've got a stack of these things that I'm going through trying to be like, yes, no, yes, no, maybe yes, no, yes, no. And if mm. it's just, you know, you might have all the qualifications in the world on the third page of your word CV, but I also may not get to that point <laughs> where I'm even able to because. <laughs> <laughs> I've just got through so many. The ones which were designed well for that really came across. And actually, interestingly, which has always been a European thing in, in my experience, more and more photographs, seeing seeing photographs on people's um, CVs like that, it would really not necessarily, you know, I wasn't discounting anyone because of it, but it made me, gave me a connection with the person, gave me a connection and a chance to like look at them and say, like, hey, Okay, that's who I'm going to be working with. That's who I'm going to be staring in the eyes. Groovy, cool, like that. Like, uh, which is something I always I remember ten years ago seeing CVs with it on. It, it, it tend to be people from Europe, um, and you'd be like, oh, okay, mate, you know. And in, well, I remember business, and I remember business cards. We were going to a, in an ex exhibition when we first first started the company around 2015, 2016, and uh, someone gave me a business card, and on the uh, one side was their business email, telephone number, um, website, etc., and their picture with them full suited and booted and you flipped it over and it was their personal details and the tie was off and the, <laughs> the jacket was around. I like, that. I like that. It's memorable, right? It was, it really was like, it really, really was. Um, so uh, yeah. Anything else that people can do to stand out because like, you know, you and I, we haven't employed hundreds of people in, our, in, 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 you know, our careers. It, this has been a real eye opener for me just going through the sheer amount of them and seeing, okay, everyone's doing this wrong and everyone's doing that wrong. And, and if I can throw one out, follow up. Yeah. hundred percent. Right. You know, if you, if, if, if you're going to, if you're going to message less people about, you know, if you're going to message the jobs you want, as opposed to just applying horrendously follow up afterwards. And you know, to use an example, the person we've employed didn't get into the interview stage. We were just at setting up interviews and they hadn't made it through to that point for whatever reason. If we Not had so many to go or through. That, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They were going to be in our second run, but they messaged me. Mm. Messaged me and was like, how is the recruitment going? And I was like, wow, you know, out of 240 applications, we probably had 20, maybe 20 messages where people followed up, maybe 10%, yeah, like that. maybe less. Like maybe less than that follow, actual follow-up not just messaging eh, it's a good probably even less maybe yeah yeah which is amazing which is amazing like i've always followed up but then you gotta think it's so easy for you to fall to the bottom of a pile before someone gets to meet you uh, I, i've just been amazed that more people weren't messaging me messaging you messaging us constantly being like hey 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 hey, hey. <laughs> i applied for that job <laughs> yeah and, and i and i think it is i think to a degree X amount of people are in that position where maybe they've been unemployed for some time now with COVID and they are just blanket applying for things. Um, you can almost see that in some some yeah. of the experiences because you're like, well, you haven't read this. <laughs> you're a different job than what you do. Um, but but I, and those people are never going to chase, right? I guess it's no. because they're not even they're not even reading the thing in the first place. But yeah, it is a it's something that I remember from back applying for jobs when Me it, too. when I get, uh, where it's like it feels like it's a bit like a sales chase or or uh, or something like that. You you got to get uh, get over yourself. Just do it. Like it's not it's not a problem. They just won't reply if they don't want to. Yeah. Right? You know, you 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 like I mean, obviously don't go over the top. <laughs> like you're not know, every day, but do chase up on these things. If you've not heard anything in a few days, you should have. Yes. You're within your rights. Like I've done nothing but apologize to people that I haven't got mm. back to them quick enough with responses, rejection, exception, like whatever. Um, just because we've been going through so much. Because I feel, you know, if you're gonna go to the effort of sending me a CV and say, I want to work it, work with you, at least I can do is be on top of that. In the same way, like, you know, chase and 
say, hey, did it work out? And then, you know, it, and same thing on the other side. If it doesn't go well, ask, well, why, why not? You know, and the answer might be someone someone came along who just had more experience. Okay, great. Or it might come up, come along and be like, well, these things were missing from your CV and I had 10 people it wasn't missing from your CV. Hmm. But, but it's really worth having yeah, might, That response you get might make you realize that, oh, I do have that experience. It's just not on my CV properly. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, some, or, or not. Or, but you, the, those, 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 that feedback you get from the person that's actually not interviewing you is mm. really important. Mm. <laughs> like, and, and usually brutally honest. Well, often. Especially because it's people like you, right? <laughs> yeah. Is, you know, in a, a nice way, brutally honest in a nice way, though. Like, you know, you can be brutally honest with someone uh, and it'd be really helpful as long as they take it the right way. Yeah. In, and, you know, you don't have to be brutal. You could just be honest. No. Or so yeah, I hear. Just, on, I just honest. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know what between brutal and just honest is. There's, there's probably a, a, a you know, <laughs> touchy feely honest. I, I don't know. I haven't got the word so, right now. Softly honest. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it is as well and the other thing is to get out your mind when chasing it is is the sales bit right someone like yourself you're brilliant at what you do but you're not a salesperson every kind of that anything that opens a door to feel that like feels icky and horrible to you you're like i don't want to chase them man it feels salesy but if you're applying for a job it's different potentially that is someone that you're going to be talking to every single day for the next five years like they, they, you're going to see them more than you see your people that you see at home like right. sending a message to that person before you've even started working together and be like hey Janie Johnny any any word on that because you know literally I've started for for what the process we went through I then started a dialogue and I was able to be like ah sorry really really behind do you know what now you've messaged me are you free Tuesday comes yeah. on Tuesday, you look someone in the whites of their eyes, they smash it out of the park. All right, cool. There you go. Who knew that was going to happen? Yeah. And sometimes that just prompts a second look at a CV that you just got sort of skimmed the first time and you missed it. Like, you know, you never know yeah. what, that, what that might trigger in the person's <laughs> mind. So it's totally worth it. And after, after being in business since I was 19, 17, whatever, 20 odd years of, of, of working in business now, I'm not a CV expert. I've written like 10 20 maybe i did a lot of jobs in my 20s mm. probably written 20 cvs right but like that's it in my entire life <laughs> at best i've written one a year and I, and, I, and I definitely haven't as well so like don't rely on on the cv alone because you are the usp and someone's going to want to work with you not that bit of paper that you said i am very good at being motivated and attentive like now you can you can put off more of yourself when you get open a dialogue and feel free to open a dialogue with someone who you might be working with exactly Exactly. Exactly. Well, Mr. Tony, thank you so much for joining us. Maybe, maybe I can squeeze you back in for another episode out of your busy schedule. You'll have to be very nice. I will soften you up with <laughs> biscuits and skittles just like you like. Um, mm. In the meantime, if people want to come and find you, where do they find you, Mr. Tony? They can find me on, you know, LinkedIn, Tony Gordon. Uh, if nice. you're interested in someone that posts very rarely on their personal social accounts, I'm at Sir Bones <laughs> really on most of the other things, but I wouldn't really worry yourself with that. But Bones knows on YouTube, it's a load of nonsense, but you might like it. <laughs> uh, and of course, GeoPro UK, that's the most important place to go. Thank you for finishing that off. <laughs> also, watch the space for the director's cuts and bang into barbecue. Love that. Mr. Tony, we can't end it better than that. I will see you later. Bye. <laughs>